So seven reasons for small groups. Uh, it increases individual spiritual growth. Uh, there have been a few studies done where they basically ask people, where in your life did you experience the most personal growth in terms of spiritual growth? Uh, was it the worship service? You know, where was it? And people uh, continually say the place they experience the most spiritual growth is in small groups. Uh, because it's in small groups that it's more accountability, more relationship, more intimacy, more sharing of life, and that's where people grow. Provides a place to build relationships. You know, when you're in a group of 6, 8, 10, 12 people, that's who you build your friendships with. That's, that's who you make friends with. Develops support in times of trial. You know, if you're going through struggles, you know, who supports you? Who cares for you? Well, it's your small group if you're in one. They do that. Motivates people to serve others because we, we see the needs that our, our fellow small group members have and we uh, are willing to respond to those needs. Offers an ideal site for assimilation of new people because one of the things that new people want is friendships. And sometimes if the, if the class is too big, they don't develop friendships there. And they don't develop friendships in worship, typically. Uh, people come in to worship many times. They sit down, they worship, they get up, they leave. They don't talk to people, particularly in big churches. Uh, they just don't build friendships there. You've got to get them in the smaller groups for, to build those friendships. Helps to develop leadership. Because in a small group, you're going to have more leaders. You're going to have people who host it. Uh, if you do it right and you have an apprentice leader, an apprentice host, you can really develop leadership in a small group. And it gives a place for new people to try. Uh, one of the questions that will, will come up when, in leadership development is where are the entry levels for leaders in churches? Uh, in our churches, we're not going to let new people teach doctrine to our kids, right. things like that. We're not going to let them be on the main board. But where, where can a new person get their feet wet in leadership and begin to teach, begin to participate? Where is that? Most of our churches don't have many entry point training places for new people. And that's one of the reasons why we struggle for leadership. Small groups are a great place for that. You can provide the curriculum. You can put them in a group with six people. Now, if they say something wrong with six people, they'll probably love them and forgive them. And they may even correct them. And they can do it in a small setting where the person's not embarrassed. But you're not going to let them teach 100 people, but you can let them teach six people. And they'll learn. They'll grow. And if they can, if they can add two or three or four more people to that group of six and make it 10 or 12, they're showing some leadership ability. Um, it's a great way to begin. Uh, and particularly if you provide curriculum, so you provide some sort of uh, oversight uh, to what's going on uh, in that small group. It's a great place to bring new people into and give them a chance. Challenges the church to grow beyond its facilities. That's always a problem in America because we've been kind of, um, we've had this edifice complex, you know, where they've got to have the, the building. And the buildings are important in the United States. Uh, but we, if we're really going to minister, we're going to have to get outside the walls. And uh, small groups is a way to do that. Uh, in this book called uh, Tightrope, walk, uh, Walking the Small Group Tightrope, uh, he talks about that there are different challenges uh, in small groups, uh, that when you're in small groups, you're challenged to take truth and put it into life. Now, in, in worship, you're not always that way. You know, we can hear the preacher preach truth. But we're not forced to apply that truth to our life. And so, as you know, we've got a lot of churches that have a lot of head knowledge. A lot of people who know the Bible. But they just haven't put it into practice in their life. In a small group, hard to get away with that. Because in a small group, we'll be talking about, well, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, let's go around the room tonight and everybody kind of share, you know, how has this been played out in your life? Uh, well, <laughs> well, let me think about that. You know? uh, and it forces us uh, in a more intimate small group setting to apply the truth to our life. Uh, the development challenge. Uh, 
the issues of care and discipleship. We all know we need to disciple people, but where does that happen? You know, we all know we need to care for people, but where does that happen? Uh, to some extent, in larger groups it does, but it really happens in the small groups. That's where we talk to each other about the Word of God. That's where uh, you know, people are, are saying to us, you know, I'm really struggling with my prayer life. And, and we say, well, you know, I, I used to struggle with my prayer life too, and I still do once in a while, but here's some things I've learned. That's discipleship. That's, that's sharing, you know. Um, where does the, uh, the teaching of the older people with the younger people, where does that come into play? Well, it doesn't happen in worship. Yeah, happens in smaller groupings. When you have generations mixed together, and you've got some young couples with kids and some older couples who have already raised their kids, and, you know, they're saying, yeah, I got this strong-willed child, I just can't do anything with them. And then the other people can say, well, you know, we experienced that. And this is what happened, you know. There's a lot of times I've said to couples, you know, there's a long ways between 16 and, and uh, 32 years old. Because we struggled with our 16-year-old. And uh, now he's 38. But, you know, uh, at the time, you know, boy, what a difference, you know. And, and we've seen such a turnaround in his life. And, you know, now he teaches in a Christian school. And, you know, uh, you know, wow. We look back and think, is this the same kid we knew at 16 years old? What a difference, you know. Well, that's, that's teaching them. And that happens in smaller settings. It doesn't happen in worship. Get them into small groups. Relational challenge, friendships, accountability, that happens in small groups. Kindness, confrontation, that happens in small groups. Tasks and people, um, you know, working together, uh, living together, struggling together, that happens in a small group. Openness, intimacy, this all happens. Uh, in the, the small groups. So small groups are really powerful in helping people grow in, in their faith. 